Got a lease car? Don't turn it in right now. Why? Because it's worth a ton more than car dealers want you to think it is. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy in author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. The amazing Elizabeth is here. And we're going to talk about lease returns and why you shouldn't let your lease car go back to the car dealer right now. There's money involved here that you just don't want to pass up on. Trust us on that. And today, we're going to tell you how to capitalize on it. As our loyal followers know, the Homework Guy channel focuses on preparing car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. Today, we're giving you a very necessary heads up on why you don't want to let your lease go without giving serious consideration to the possibility of just buying it yourself. If you're new here, there are tons of videos you need to see on our channel covering car buying strategies and everything you need to know from paying for a car with cash to avoiding becoming a victim of fraud at a car dealership. So show your intelligence, subscribe now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. The Homework Guy is the best car buying advice you can find online. Well, let's dig into a few terms you need to be familiar with if you have a lease and main term that you really need to know, well, it's residual value. Why does it matter and what could residual value mean to you financially? If you didn't already know, a leased car's residual value is the value of the car at the end of the lease term. It's pre-established like a future projection on what the car will be worth when the lease is over. So why do they establish a residual value? Because they have to know how much to charge you for your monthly lease payment. It's all based off what the residual value is at the end. Yep. So lease companies estimate how much value you'll use based on the miles you plan to drive and the time you lease the car for the residual value is what you have left at the end of the lease. It's established on day one, as we've said. What's really important to you about residual value is that it's also the amount you can buy the car for at the end of the lease. Exactly. And in today's bloated market, that's a really important piece of information. You almost sound a little Ron Whitish there for a moment. <laughs> well, let me explain why that information is so important. Back when car prices were in line with previous car prices and before the pandemic hit, that's when they set your residual value. Mm -hmm. They can't change that inflated number now just because the car market blew up. The residual value is still the same number they thought the car would be worth back on the day you signed your lease. That means the residual value is a number that is much lower, almost 100% guaranteed to be much lower than any price you could buy a similar car for on the market right now. So if you leased a car a couple years ago, you are so winning right now. Yes. So here's an example of what Kevin is talking about. This is a 2018 Toyota Camry XSE with 27,334 miles. It was listed yesterday on Vroom at 31,499. If you leased that vehicle in 2018 and you planned on driving it 10,000 miles a year, there's a really good chance that the residual value stated on your lease contract is in the ballpark of 25,199. That's a $6,300 difference, and it all goes to your benefit if you decide to buy that car. Shoot, even if you don't want to keep the car because you don't like it for some reason, I still recommend that you buy it. With the same car sitting at a dealership for $31,499, yeah. you could sell this car private party yourself for $29,000. You'd undercut the dealers by $2,500. You'd save somebody some money who needs to save money, and you'll still pocket $3,800. Why wouldn't you do that? I, I guess you just don't like money or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, in a residual percentage or a specific end value is always stated in your lease documents at the time you sign the car agreement to help you calculate the car's value at the end of the lease. And even if you have to figure out the math, it's easier than you might think. A few things to know about residual values. They are not the same from one car manufacturer to the next. For example, on average, residual value for a 36 month lease tends to hover right around that 50% mark. However, it can dip into the low 40s and be as high as the mid 60% range. That's a huge range. And if you don't know what the percentage is for your vehicle, or you've never even heard of residual value on a lease, just do a quick search of your own and try using the phrase vehicles with the best residual value in your search criteria. It's true that leasing companies don't know exactly how much your car is going to be worth after it depreciates over the length of the lease. So they make a calculated guess based mostly on past depreciation experience with that brand or that model. So they're kind of like uh, Las Vegas odd makers on this. For sure. They weigh in with educated estimates of a new car's market value two or three years down the road. And then that's what they go with. The truth is nobody could have known that this past year would be as crazy as it was. 
and nobody knew the car market would be as bloated as it is right now. So the bottom line is, your leased car is likely to be available at a price that is more in line with the 2019 prices. And by today's standards, your car is a steal. Let's throw that example on the screen again, can we? You see this? Why not you be the beneficiary of that instead of the dealer or the leasing company? Now, as the final months of your car lease are ticking down, it's your decision if you want to buy your lease car or not, or just to turn it in. Right now, because residual values are very favorable, as we mentioned, and dealers are out there almost begging for used cars. <laughs> it's very likely that you're being bugged right now by either the leasing company or the dealer where you leased it because they want you to turn that vehicle in early. Don't do it. Don't fall for any enticements they might offer you. There's only one reason they want your car back right now, and it is not because they're trying to be nice to nope, you. They're never. not trying to be helpful, anything. No. Nope. They are only trying to take advantage of you. That's it. So besides the value calculation we just showed you, here are four other reasons you should consider buying your own leased car. Number one, you like the car and you took good care of it. It's very possible that with the love affair you had with that new car a few years ago isn't over yet, nor should it be. If you feel at home in your car and you like it, why dump it? You've taken good care of it, you followed the factory maintenance schedule as per the lease, and didn't drive it like you stole it, right? <laughs> so keep it. You have perfectly good reasons for leasing it in the first place, and if it's still holding up, why replace it? Number two, you could be facing an unfavorable assessment because on the flip side of that, Maybe you didn't take all that great a care of the vehicle as you intended. Suddenly, you're facing a very real possibility of a great big fee for excess wear and tear, some dings and dents. And on top of that, you exceeded the mileage cap you agreed to. And now, you're going to get hammered for it. Missing your mileage goal by just a 1,000 miles can cost you as much as $250 or even more in some cases. Why would you want to pay all those fees if your car isn't actually that bad? You can avoid that big balloon fee at the end of the lease by simply buying the car. Think seriously about that. Number three, you want to avoid the hassle of car shopping. Our video channel helps you a ton and the internet has helped to streamline the car buying process, but even still, shopping for a new ride can be exhausting. Unless you love the thrill of the hunt and the thrill of dealing with Steve Richards and Andy Elliott type trainees, <laughs> you might want to just take the course of least resistance and just buy your leased car. End of lease deal making with a lender is generally always quicker and easier than starting from scratch with a new car deal. Number four, new and used car prices are way higher than usual right now. Car makers are struggling to keep up with new car demand. The current microchip shortage has been a wrinkle in the auto industry's attempt to keep pace with your demand. Short supply of new cars has meant that there aren't as many used cars making it to the dealer lots. Consequently, the supply of used cars is thin across the board too. Cox Automotive reports that there are roughly 2.3 million used cars available in the United States today sitting on dealer lots, but that is down from 2.8 million used cars a year ago. That's an 18% drop in car supply Bottom line, you will pay premium bucks right now for any other new or used car. So why not keep the leased car you already have and buy it at the end of your lease? And if you're not sure how to buy your leased car, it's quite simple. After you've made that decision of following our advice and that's worth it, alert the leasing agent. Unless you use an independent leasing company, this is likely going to be the dealer that you got the car from. Actually, whoever has been nagging you <laughs> about leaving your lease early to lease another car, well, that's likely who the leasing it's agent is. It's like a mic is. drop, just boom. <laughs> yeah. I want, I'm going to buy the car. Yes, we <laughs> want your car. That's the leasing agent, you guys. So make an appointment from with that person, and from there, take the same steps you would follow to buy any new or used car. While you don't have to worry about price because that was already determined by the residual value, it's still a smart idea to shop around for your financing to at least know what rate you qualify for before you're sitting down to do the deal. Do all your homework just like you would if you're doing any other car purchase. And with all your ducks lined up, you know, quacking in a little row, <laughs> well, you're ready to go into the dealership armed with the information you need to make a great deal. Or like Steve Richards says the other day, you're ready to go to war. Oh, wow. Well, and don't let them pile on the fees and worthless products you don't need. Make them give you a straight up sale. That's totally right. Yep, play hardball. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us a great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos. Not only do you help other people by making comments below, the comments are one way to boost the search algorithms that help the other people find the content too. Add hashtag the homework guide to your comment. And if you're on other platforms, look for us out there. There's a list of options here on the screen now and they're linked in the description box below. If you're new here, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people and you might as well benefit from our great content too. 45 million people and growing, and growing really fast. 
Well, if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will also be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. No problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us out is to share this video with family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. So I encourage everyone to subscribe and ring the notification bell too. You know, the ding, 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 so you don't miss a thing. Yeah. Hey, that's a nice little rhyme, isn't it? <laughs> the entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's exactly what we do. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.